Welcome to Kerry's Wheel of the Year. I'm just making a cup of tea because I haven't been over to the allotment for two weeks, not since my last video actually. Um, and I need uh, a bit of time to think because it's all a bit mad. And I got a bit despondent last time, as you knew. Um, but today, it's the 30th of August, and this evening there is, um, you know, just make sure my tea doesn't get too strong. Um, there is a super blue moon. Yes, super blue moon. Apparently, the last time we had a super blue moon was December 2009. And the next one will not be until January 2037. Wow. So this one's quite a rare full moon. I have plans this evening. I'm going to do a big old tarot reading or something. And the idea, apparently, with this kind of uh, super blue moon is to review sort of deep-seated emotions and set intentions. I think there's a lot more to it than that but you know I'm sure you can all do your own kind of research into that stuff. But I think it's really interesting that as we are at the end of August and there's a bit of a sniff of autumn in the air. A bit of a review and a bit of contemplation and a bit of planning, sowing some seeds if you will, for epic stuff to come next year, practically and emotionally feels about right you know I mean if I was to review the gardening year and my emotional year I'll be honest with you it's not been brilliant I can't just sit and wait for you know stuff to happen that is good it's not how the universe works we have to get our heads in gear don't we we have to kind of get our heads down have a good old review about what has been good and be grateful you know with harvest festival coming up in september so you know uh, around the equinox we will have a celebration of harvest full-on fruits and veg and everything and that's always a powerful time to review and give thanks we have to get our heads in what has worked be grateful for that kind of look at why it's worked look at what we can do look at the things that haven't worked and have an idea of why maybe they haven't worked and then make plans to really enhance the landscape internally and externally that's my plan anyway yeah, and, and that's why I love gardening, because that's what it does for me. It, it, it makes me stop. It makes me review. It makes me look at how I've approached these things. And I know that because I haven't been emotionally um, balanced over this year, because of lots and lots of things that have happened, um, the gardening suffered, you know, it absolutely has. You know, my mental health has... Um, you know, had a, a, a huge slide and the garden reflects that. But actually wandering around today in the allotment, I'm looking at all of the things that have just carried on regardless <laughs> and just gone, oh, I don't know what she's doing, but, you know, we're just going to carry on. And um, and a lot of it is looking really fabulous. I'll take you on a bit of a tour in a bit and, and just show you the things are you know, getting on with life. 
And that's really inspiring. I'm being inspired today. The kiwi fruit seems to be thriving. As you can see, loads of the tomatoes are um, coming along. See, there's some little red ones in there. And down here, managed to survive one aubergine. And where is it now? Well, look at that. A few more aubergines of a different kind. And the nasturtiums, even though I cut them back, have gone bonkers again, covered up the tomatoes outside the greenhouse. I think I might have to hack my way through there in a bit. There's parsnips in here somewhere, along with more blooming great big spiders. Okay, hopefully they're okay in there. I mean, as you can see, it's all chaos. However, look at this. So, there are grapes. I really didn't expect to get grapes this year. On the grapevine, which is climbing up and over the structure I made earlier in the year. And across the way from the grapevines, this has been, well, an abandoned brassica bed. <laughs> Although there is one, one lone uh, Brussels sprout plant surviving. And these are Jerusalem artichokes. Look at them. Massive. Oh, see those tomatoes. Those down there. That was a volunteer. It, it sprang up all of its own accord, so I left it alone. More bindweed. I really am going to have to do some serious hacking and slashing. But, you know, on the whole, things are kind of doing. I mean, all this beautiful borage with the nasturtiums there. Well, one of the courgettes has survived. Look at that. Let's go and have a look, see if there's anything actually on it. Okay, so after all the rust on the Welsh onions, they seem to be recuperating, although they are still completely covered by tiny little um, what, marauding beasts, snails, that's it. That's, and there's lots of weeds in here, but look at this. One of the courgettes has actually survived and has teeny tiny baby courgettes. So at least one has survived. Well, well, crikey, garlic chives. They seem to have done okay. And these were the last lot of carrots that I planted. Crikey, they seem to be doing okay as well. And there's some beetroots and spinach that actually has survived since last year. A few more carrots. Oh, yeah, this is the um, once tidy old asparagus bed. Oh, and in here, so one of the cucumbers has survived ravages and there are some flowers on it look at that look at that that is a butternut squash i mean i seriously doubt if anything is going to come on that and there are some golden mange too which seem to have survived hurrah so we shall see Oh, look, what's this one? I think that might be another, another, um, what are you? Cucumber. <laughs> grow up there. That's where you're supposed to grow. Let's see, try and encourage it up there. And these, oh, look, 
both the marrows have survived. No fruits that I can see yet. But, you know, nevertheless, still surviving. Let's have a look. What else? Oh my god. What? That, believe it or not, you should just see one poking out there, is the um, sweet potatoes. I think I may need to weed this bed today. Look at that. Again, you know, not an awful lot of things and really none of the beans that I planted, I think. Ooh, I lied. Look at this. <gasps> it's actually beans. I have a surviving French bean plant. That's awesome. And quite frankly, a miracle. But there you go. Well, this poor little tree has been absolutely bent by the wind. I think I might move this, actually, put it somewhere else. And look at that. The raspberries seem to have come to life. I think I should have picked them ages ago. I mean, look at all this. <laughs> it's all just berserk. <laughs> Oh dear, so look at how the herb bed is just bonkers. I think this all needs a rethink. I think we're going to give it a big old rethink. So this video will be great because I will have a good look at it later when I'm putting this little thing together. Look at those lovely raspberries. Look at the mint. It's all gone over now. I can probably chop that down now. Um, and I'm having a bit of a think about how to reorganise all of this. And the blueberry bushes, which I've had for ages and haven't given me any fruit. Ah, oh, look at my beautiful crabapple tree. Look at all of those beautiful crabapples. This crabapple tree we bought for one of our camps to be the world tree, basically. And it became part of a massive great ritual. And um, it has just been such a joy ever since. And the now lives on the allotment. This is the wildlife pond. I've just been given a load of lovely little plants by my good friend Heidi and her lovely husband, Stu, who were clearing out their pond. And the Rosa Rugosa. No hips on that. Oh, there are some, just coming. I'm going to see if I could do some rose hip syrup. Watched how to do that this morning. Um, and this is just, I'm letting it go wild, but I am going to get rid of all this flipping bindweed. And the quince tree had to cut back a bit yeah, it's quite tall now and here are the ripening barred sea apples I'm going to try and pick one in a minute see if it's ready don't they look lush I hope they taste as good as they look oh <laughs> my goodness there's actually a little fig in there look at that I doubt it's going to ripen I think it's too late now this is not a bad basket after my despondency last time and I've done quite a lot of work so I've been chopping I've been chopping the weeds as you can see I'm a bit dishevelled because I'm bending over <clears throat> and um, I'm trying this experiment it's called chop and drop along the paths down here I've been trying it for a little while now. I'll show you. You can see that I haven't done it properly because I haven't chopped up the big woody bits. But underneath all the weeds and things I've just thrown down, you can see there's soil. So basically, the idea is 
that you chop all of your weeds up, leave them on the path, and as you trample them, they basically break down and become compost. Huh. Well, so far it seems to be working. We shall see. Machine around the corner. I've kind of demolished it. The nasturtiums a little bit and tried to free up the tomatoes and and here ooh, spice some more tomatoes down there to harvest it's getting a bit late now I've done lots you can see I'm covering the path in lots of weeds and things to try and turn it into mulch for the beds so some underneath it already looking brown and, and good so I'll just keep trampling on it chopping it up and filling up more turning it over and that will make a good compost now I've done quite a lot of weeding I couldn't weed up the back there sadly because there's a shed load of wasps in the tree. Didn't fancy getting stung. I've already been stung by a bee this week. But as you can see, asparagus bed, the other beds, all looking a bit clearer down there. So I've done about half the beds. Yeah, that'll do for today. It's quite late now. And I'm a bit knackered. But, you know, it's not looking too bad. For a few hours' work. I managed to free up the sweet potatoes, get rid of loads of bindweed out of the beds, and to pick a few veg. So I think it's a good day today. Yeah, time to go home, I think.